Hi friends, today I will take a look at a complete parametric adaptive curved and sloped bridge superstructure. Since it will be a curved bridge, I will be using an adaptive family template and designing the bridge in a conceptual design environment. Let's jump right into it. We are opening up a new adaptive family template. Here we will create a cross section for our bridge. I am setting up reference planes, but they will not be used to constrain any geometry, only for visible help. To showcase what kind of cross section I am aiming to create, we quickly draw it up. The blue lines is the outer lines for our cross section, and the pink points will be parametric and hold the cross section together. The big point in the middle will be an adaptive point, and the first point I will place out. So an adaptive point will be used to place the bridge cross section on the bridge center line or the curve, and in this case we will only use one adaptive point. So from this adaptive point I will place reference points that will be hosted on a selected plane on the adaptive point. So when the adaptive point moves, the reference points will move with it. It is possible to associate parameter to the reference point, and it will only move in the adaptive plan that has been selected for it. Let's select the plan on our adaptive point in which the reference points will move in. So when associating the reference points with a parameter, it will move in our desired direction based on the plane we picked. That is very important to pick the right plane on the adaptive point the reference points will be hosted to. We continue to place our reference point for the bridge height or thickness, but first we need to change the plane on the adaptive point where the reference point will be hosted. Because we intend to go in another direction than the previously placed out points, it's also possible to host a reference point to another reference point. Don't have to be an adaptive point. The next two points will be hosted to the newly created reference points and will create the bottom width for our cross section. Drag it to the two reference planes meeting point. This is only for visual effect, so we can easily imagine the cross section. Let's form a spline through the points to form our broad bridge cross section. Carefully select the correct points to form the spline and make all the lines form a close loop. As for now, the cross section is not parametric, so we need to add a couple of parameters. We go ahead and open up the family type window and add width bot, width top and the height. These three parameters will be the user defined inputs, but they won't be connected directly to the reference points. Since they operate at an offset distance from another point, we will need to create a new parameters with formulas that define that distance. All these parameters will be calculated values and be of the mercy of the three user-defined parameters created. I will place all of them in the other category since they will be in the back. The H1 is actually the height and is the offset in a negative direction from the adaptive point. So the formula will be height multiplied by negative 1. B1 is the offset from the adaptive point for the top width. This is half the value of the user defined width top in a positive direction. So the formula will be top width divided by 2. The B2 is almost the same, only this point is offset in a negative direction from the adaptive point. So the B, B1 and 2 is for the bot width and will be offset from the reference points that define the thickness. So we just go ahead and write out the formulas I just described for our parameters before we connect them all to the points. To associate the parameter with the point, we click the point, go to properties menu on the right and scroll down to the built-in parameter, offset. On the left is a small button, press it and find the correct parameter created just a couple of seconds ago. This point is now parametric and can be controlled by changing the values for the top width parameter. We do the same one for all the points, but be precise and make sure to connect the correct parameter to the correct point. Connect the last two points to make this cross section fully parametric. So let's start a new adaptive family. Here we will use the 2D section to create an adaptive 3D part of our bridge. We set the plane and make it visible. Proceed by positioning three reference points 
and making them adaptive, and then forming a spline that connects these points. It's crucial to have three points for a disk task as we aim for the bridge superstructure to conform to a curved trajectory, which isn't achievable with just two points. Return to our 2D section, save it to the desktop with a logical name. We perch it and then we load it into the new family, making it a nested family. So back to the new family, we place two reference points on the spline. These reference points will be hosted on the line and their positions will be at the mercy of the adaptive points orientation in space. When changing the position to one adaptive point, the spline will follow and the reference points will do the same. The reference points will host the 2D cross section and as you can see, the work plane the cross section is placed on is always perpendicular to the spline it is hosted on. Select the two cross sections and the spline. This will force the geometry to follow the spline when creating the form. So we are going to create a form. And yeah, we are getting there. Let's test out how the rotation works. We select a reference point that the cross section is hosted to. We go to the properties menu and find the rotation angle. We change the value and yeah, the cross section rotated with the point. Since this is a nested component, the end user do not have the access to cross section parameters. If we load it into the project, we need to connect the parameters from the nested family to the host family, so it will be accessible for the end user in the main project. Firstly, let's set up the parameters that we would like to access from the nested family, which is width, top, width, bot, and height. Also, we want to control the rotation of our bridge deck, so add a rotation for reference points A and B. And this data type must be set to angle, and put in some numerical values for height and width. We then proceed by selecting the nested family, the 2D cross section. We find the parameters in the properties menu and press the little button on the right side and connect to the correct parameters. We also connect the rotation to the built-in parameter on the reference points. When all connected, we then flex the adaptive family to ensure everything functions as intended. It's wise to periodically flex the model to verify its functionality. Absolutely lovely, it functions precisely as I envisioned. So we go ahead and save our family on the desktop with a logical name. Extend the reference points all the way to the end of the spline, where they converge with our adaptive point. We then perch our family to remove unused objects to improve performance and reduce file size. So this configuration could serve as the completed bridge deck suitable for a small curved bridge or a section of a larger bridge. However, let's proceed one step further. Once again, open another new adaptive family and once again generate three adaptive points and construct a spline passing through them. This time I mark the spline, utilize the divide future and generate a total of 27 points along the spline, which will be used to place the adaptive bridge component. We then load in the bridge deck part and connect them to the divided points that are connected to the spline. We hit the repeat button. As a result, we observe the deck component filling the entire length of the spline. We can now move the bridge around in the 3D environment by moving the adaptive point. The whole bridge geometry will follow. It's kind of like a snake. And now it is possible to individually select each part and adjust its slope to match the desired road inclination. We go ahead and change the slope for every bridge deck part, gradually increasing the slope from the start to the end. When that is all done, we go ahead and save it and purge it before loading it into the main project.
in the main project we can place it out, either on a face or on a work plane. The placement points for bridge are the adaptive points where the spline and the divided points are connected to. So it's landed uh, upside down, no problem, we just use the flip action in the properties menu to flip the whole bridge to the correct position. We place out another bridge superstructure, we find it in the project browser and do the same as the first bridge, but this time we're making it a bit bigger. Pretty beautiful bridge if I must say my, myself. So okay, so one thing we forgot was to establish parameters in the hosted family making the bridge parametric. We go back and add the parameters and connect them to the nested family before loading it back into the main project. Okay, so this concludes this um, bridge tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe for more content.